Hello Internet. Today we have an RX 570. Or maybe we have an RTX 3060 Ti. Little different, I hope you guys don't mind. Customer stated artifacts, so we're gonna go straight into the memory test. Power it on and let's see how our test will perform. Hopefully you can see that the test isn't looking good, so let's wait and see what errors we get. USB drive come out. Let's open it up and let's take a look at the primary report file. Right there, it shows we have two locations with the memory errors, A0 and B1. Another way we can confirm this is by looking at the NVMT test. Every line starting with A0 shows same minimum and maximum value which is good. However, those values are different from the rest of the chips. Looking further down at the B1 shows different minimum and maximum values, also indicating a problem. Okay, we have our diagnosis, so let's take the card apart and take a close look at how well, or not, ASUS designed their cooling system. Right off the bat, we have good cooling for the VRM. Pads are making contact with driver MOSFETs and coils. But I still have to give this design three strikes. First strike is not having good cooling for the electrolytic capacitors. Second strike is this bracket of death. With every generation of GPU, memory phase brackets just get smaller and smaller, which causes memory phase not operate properly, and you notice it with the jerky frame rates. This problem exists on all premium ASUS carts, we're just gonna play dumb and assume it was an accident. Moving on to the radiator, it appears that the heat distribution pipes actually solder to the radiator, which is great, but there's so little solder. I don't think it's soldered all the way through. I mean, you can see some of it there, but that's all. That much just could be a decoy, and I'm not too comfortable to call this a feature. Maybe an attempt. On the back, no pads. Strike three. Now let's look at the core itself. I don't know why there's a big bar mark over here and a few on the edges over there. Possibly because paste was a little dry? I'm not sure. In any case, if this card gets fixed, it'll receive a new paste at no additional charge. Back to the memory chips. A0 and B1 are going to be those two and it looks like we have GDDR6 from Samsung. I have a few of those in stock so let's get on it. This time I'm using pins to keep the board from moving around on the preheat station. The only problem with those is that the cards have different size holes, so I have to make sure I have a few different size pins to counter that. Keeping the board from moving around gives a good number of benefits, so I thought I'd share it with you. Chips were replaced, let's power on the card and run the test. You can already tell that the test isn't looking too healthy. So let's take a look at the report and it looks like A0 is good but B1 still shows errors. Maybe I had a faulty memory chip. That happens sometimes. So let's try another chip and see if that fixes the problem. As you can see, replacing that chip a second time did not help. And if we look at the report, the error is now back where it wasn't there before. So what do we do when the error jumps from one chip to another? Correct? We rebold the GPU.
reball is done. Let's try it again. And uh, you can already tell that the test is looking a lot better and it does pass. Great. Now, before I go into testing the card, I'd like to take some measurements because I know some of you guys out there may need them. So here we go. 12 volt kilo ohms, 3.310K. This 12 volt inductor is kilo ohms, 1K on 1.8 volt line, 20 ohms on memory. This is Samsung, so that's normal. This 12 volt inductor kilo ohms, 5K on 5 volt, and 5 ohms on PEX. Now let's check for voltages. Now look guys, after replacing those memory chips twice and reballing the GPU, and all that heat did not damage the board in any obvious way. But look at the memory phase area. You see the dark spot? Why Asus thinks this area can be cooled with a small piece of aluminum? I know why. They want it broken as soon as possible, so you go and buy another GPU. That's why. In any case, the card is assembled and we're finally ready to run some stress tests to make sure it works under load and performs as expected. A few minutes in Fermark shows stable temperatures all the way. No artifacts in Valley and Superposition is moving as smooth as expected. With that there, I call this card a fix and it's already on its way back to its rightful owner and as for you, if you're located anywhere near the United States and need a repair, please contact me by following the link to Discord in the description. And I thank you for watching. Please hit the like button only if you learned something and subscribe only if you want to learn more. Have a good day. Goodbye.